Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Saturday, March 14th, 2020. And uh, in response to a number of inquiries that I've been getting from many of you via email, yes, I am still alive uh, <laughs> and I have not produced a video in a very long time. I apologize for that and hopefully this is the start of uh, something new and we'll get back, get back to producing videos more regularly. Behind me is uh, what life has presented me at this moment. Uh, life, life has of course gotten in the way and this is one of the things that has gotten in the way. Uh, in a few weeks this bed right here is going to be filled with uh, peonies flowers and completely obstructing this wall uh, so I have to get started and replace the shingles here. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining me. I uh, hope, hope you enjoy this little project and uh, let's get started right now. So this is the section of the house that I did last season before winter set in. I ended up having to strip all of the cedar shingles on the side of the great room. And a few of the shingles along the side wall right here. Uh, one of the biggest problems that I have is with the water dam build up in this corner here at the edge of the roof where the garage meets the main roof line. Uh, the only way to keep that from happening is to keep snow clear from the edge or <laughs> at some point <laughs> install some heater wires. But where, where it dripped off the edge here down the side of the house is where I uh, ended up with ice damage because the ice would just form right against the side of the house and it rotted rotted some of the shingles so I had to replace some of them and of course all of them along this side here. If you look at the design of the Great Room Edition it's uh, it's rather unique right has uh, some appealing style elements to it but those appealing style elements uh, were not very well thought out because if you draw a vertical line from the edge of the roof where the water drips off, you'll notice it lands on the ground right at the edge of the shingles. And of course, that caused a whole lot of premature rotting. Now I'm going to be uh, taking off the first three or four rows of these shingles and cutting away at the plywood so that I can get to the rotted sill plate at the bottom that sits on top of the concrete slab to uh, rebuild this and, and uh, hopefully make it right. I will end up putting a gutter across the lip of this piece of the roof line and down the front wall of the breezeway addition <clears throat> to the ground so that uh, the water doesn't splash against the ground anymore. You can see even right here evidence on the ground of exactly where the water hits. All right? And this is the carnage that that it produced. Um, on the other side, where what I showed you earlier, um, <clears throat> if you look at these photos here, you'll see that I've added and replaced the uh, the wooden sill plates with pressure treated lumber and secured them down and then also added some aluminum flashing to uh, create a rodent barrier to hopefully uh, keep the little varmints out of the walls for at least a few more years but I've got to get going here on this project right now because where you see that cardboard box and my uh, my reciprocating saw that is <laughs> in a couple of weeks going to be taken over by uh, peonies flowers and uh, completely completely covered so I've only got a limited amount of time to get this done 
and uh, I got to get get busy. And so, as I mentioned, uh, my plan was the original plan was to remove the first three rows of shingles because these are the ones that seem to be the most damaged. And of course, as you get into a project like this, things uh, almost never go entirely as you as you plan them because I'm I'm finding now that even the fourth row up some of these shingles are quite rotted so I'll end up having to do four rows minimum uh, hopefully these fifth row shingles and up are intact uh, I'm pretty sure they will be and uh, I'll be using uh, my persuaders to grip the shingles and yank them out kind of like that I wish these had duck bills on them because it kind of it sometimes breaks sometimes breaks the shingles as I'm pulling them out uh, it rips off little little strips instead of uh, grabbing the whole shingle and, and yanking it out so that that can be a bit of a difficulty um, I've got couple of specialized tools that I purchased uh, uh, some some pry bars from Home Depot this one is specifically for removing individual shingles this little piece right here slides up underneath the shingle in between where the nails are anticipated to be so if, if I wanted to remove this this shingle I would expect the nail at the top of the shingle to be here about an inch from either end or either edge so I should be able to slide this up in between the nails and this nail, the nail for this shingle should be just above the rim for the second shingle above it. So uh, the, the, the nail for this shingle at the top is going to be right about here and right about here underneath this shingle two rows up. Of course there are also nails in the shingle um, beneath these two right here and again they are spaced about an inch from the edge of the shingle I don't like using this because uh, a lot of times even this metal bar is uh, a little too thick and it'll actually cause the shingle as you slide it underneath to crack and uh, when you've got older shingles that becomes a problem but the way it's used is you, you, sh you, you shove it up under there move it to the side and yank it down so that this little hook catches the head of the nail and then you just wrap it with a sledgehammer to rip the, the head of the nail out of the plywood and hopefully to rip it down through so that the shingle can just slide out that's the <laughs> that's how they advertise it. it doesn't always work that easily but uh, that's uh, that's what they advertise. I end up using this a lot, a lot more often because it's quite a bit thinner, and uh, I can, I can instead of having to yank the the, uh, the nail out, I'll slide this up underneath, and I'll take my my uh, slip joint pliers, and I'll just rock it to the side and pop the shingle off the head of the nail so that it can come down through. After the shingle is out then what you can do is you can go back with this tool now you have the clearance underneath the shingles above it to slide this tool in and grab onto the head of the nail and pop them down through and, and rip them out of the plywood but uh, with the shingle in place not so easy after the shingle is out if you if you can get it off the off the head of the nail so that you have now a gap created by what this shingle left behind this tool will slide right up in, in inside there and you can easily grab the, the heads of the nails and yank them down through so this is a useful tool uh, it's just not used quite the way they advertise it and now instead of recording a video for you guys <laughs> uh, it's time for me to actually get some useful work done sorry but that's why I'm here
Okay, so now I'm going to show you shingle remover tool uh, comes in quite handy. All right, I've removed several rows of shingles from the bottom here. There are still nails that are in the plywood that will prevent me from sliding new shingles up underneath to replace the ones that I've taken out. And you can find them just by sliding a tool like this across and you, and you can see that I'm hitting all of these nails. They are about this far up from the edge, right? All the way across. That's how far up the edge they are. So where this tool becomes useful is you now just go in, find the, find the nails, hook them, and yank them out. There's one. I would almost call this fun. Almost. The other problem is a lot of these heads will just break off because the nails are so rusted. I think that's what's happening here. That's, a, that's always a problem. But here's a perfect example of a nail that came out because this hook was able to rip it, rip it right out of place. So I'm going to continue on ripping out the nails and then working my way back across this way towards the, the front of the house. So I want to remove this shingle. I'll take my thin pry bar and I'm going to slide it up under here and I'm going to look for the nails. So I'm just going to go like this. And this one slides right past where I know a nail should exist. So the nail on this edge has completely rusted through. That should not be hard to pull out at all. And this one, that nail seems to be still intact. Yep, there it is right there. So that nail sits right about here somewhere. I want to lift this up just enough to pop it off the head of the nail. to my channel locks, give it a twist. Oh, crap. Okay, so what happened there was the nail, instead of popping off the, the, the shingle, instead of popping off the nail, the nail pulled out and it cracked the shingle above it. So now I'm going to treat this shingle as two shingles. And when I put another row of shingles underneath, I'm going to make sure that the, the broad surface of a shingle underneath this one will line up with this crack that I just created as if it was a seam like the normal seams that you would have between uh, shingles when you put them in place. So let's see how hard this comes out now. It's probably going to come out with the nail. And it did not. Interesting. So I've got a hole here. I know the nail is still underneath here, right? This nail did rust through. And if you look at the top edge of this shingle right now, if I put it back into place where it came out, you can see this is where two additional nails went through the shingle. So there are two, shing two nails that hold the shingle in place and two ancillary nails that are from the second row above it. All right, I'll keep my finger right there. So you can see it's right on the line between two shingles, maybe about a half an inch from the edge of either of these shingles that remain in place. When I go to put a new shingle back into place, what I'll do is I'll take my new shingle and I will jam it up in there so that I get an indentation across the thin edge of the new shingle that will give me the location of the, of the nails that remain in place, I'll just take a razor knife, cut some, cut some slots in the top of the shingle, and then it will slide up into place uh, around the nails that I have no intention of touching or removing. Um, once I get it to about an inch of where I want its final resting place to be, 
I'll put a couple of nails near the edge up at a 45 degree angle, use a nail set to put to drive them all the way in, and then take a block of wood with a hammer and just tap the shingle back up into place. That will bury the heads of the nails underneath the next row above and that'll, that'll make it watertight. All right, so being careful not to kneel on my wife's peonies that are starting to pop through the ground, I see uh, four places right now. I don't want to damage them, but I, this is a time-sensitive project. You know, as you can see, I've got about half of, the, half of the wall done, three rows up. Only a couple of shingles on that fourth row are, uh, are rotted, so I'm probably going to end up just replacing individual ones and only cutting out the plywood below the third row level. Uh, to repair this the sill plate against the the slab underneath uh, I'm going to keep finishing now until I get all the way to the front of the house right there and uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy if I get just all of these done today and that, that'll be a good day after that I'll go inside and hopefully edit the video for you and then we can upload it and you guys can see what I've been up to that's all for now from Zero Labs as it were uh, thanks, thanks all for joining me. I hope you will have fun watching this project progress. And as always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everybody.